Okay, so here we see my first attempt at soldering a piece of flex track. Now, this flex track uh, was just one one full, I guess it's three feet long segment, and you know I didn't fit it to any curve. I realized I didn't have any of the the tiny little nails that you need there to uh, to hammer in. The, the railroad ties with I know some people uh, I guess might try to glue the ties to the to the cork board as well but uh, I wanted to go with the nailing approach like I said I just I don't have any nails and didn't find any small enough just for this quick demo uh, plus my <laughs> I'm pretty bad at soldering so I really just wanted to try out the soldering method and see if I could even get that to work so in this instance I, what you would typically do first is fit the flex track to your curve uh, you can see here the you know the curve that we have of the cork board from my uh, father-in-law's old layout. Well, typically uh, what you would want to do is when you fit the flex track onto the curve is, you know, make sure that you don't have this joint somewhere where it's, where the radius is too high. Um, it's going to be very, very hard to solder. It's not impossible. Uh, you just have to, you know, account for that when you're sizing your rails correctly before you cut them. Um, additionally, what I what I uh, wanted to do also is try to um, minimize the number of bends in the flex track. Uh, I, you know, I'd read somewhere that you know you shouldn't really do much of an S curve because it can stress the rails. Um, some people may disagree. I haven't really tried it out yet. Um, but that's where, say, for instance, this curve here that you know starts out. You know, this would be you know an inside turn. And there's an outside turn here that I probably would use two pieces of flex track with a uh, with the separation and you know right here and then uh, you know basically soldering the, the rails at this point. Okay, so why you want to solder the rails is to ensure that the rails have a much uh, tighter cohesion, um, and so that way you don't have any breaks in your railroad. Now you still end up using a rail joiner as you can see here. Now. Uh, the first step, since I just took a straight piece of flex track, cut it, and uh, and resoldered it together just for a demonstration, um, the first step is to take some of these uh, and, and punch out some of these plastic ties here on the bottom of the rails. And you can see here that you know this is what, what let, lets it flex is this little gap right here. Um, so what I did is I went you know about four ties up and snipped that tie right there, and then you save these three ties they'll be important later when you're done see here they are here and you know do that on both sides of the track now as far as actually cutting the track goes I had a, a little bit of a difficult time I tried using just a pair of snips uh, it didn't work too well it mushroomed the side of the rail pretty bad um, you can see it a little bit there I tried to clean it up a little bit on that inner rail there uh, I went back to my trusty jewelers file there to try to clean that up a little bit um, also, I tried using a hacksaw. Now, this is just a regular size hacksaw. It's kind of overkill for this application. It did work. It just it was uh, very difficult to use because the rails just kept skittering around. Uh, you know, I kind of had to hold it really tight while try to, trying to use the hacksaw. Um, I'm going to try to find either a uh, model railroad saw or a model railroad pair of snips that's really meant to cut rail uh, because, like I said, I did find the operation very difficult. And, you know, if you're securing down, you know, piece after piece after piece of track, um, you know, you really don't want to be bringing a hack, you know, full size hacksaw up into the middle of your layout and, you know, p potentially damaging everything. Uh, so then what I did is, you know, I, I cleaned up the, the cuts a little bit. Uh, you put in my rail joiners and then actually soldered in the rail joiners. Now you can see here I did a pretty bad job in this outside one. I've never been great at soldering. I want to practice and get better. My, uh, well, new to me soldering iron has certainly helped. It gets much hotter, much quicker, works a lot better than my old uh, wood burning soldering iron I'd used for my previous layout and it has replaceable tips. Hopefully this isn't so hot. Yeah, there we go. Um, so that way if the tip gets filthy, I can, you know, replace the tip easily enough and we're, you know, don't lose any time there. So you can see here, there's, like I said, a, ended up depositing an awful lot of solder. It still works. It's a little unsightly, but if uh, I can test it out here by using this box car. Let's see, that is not on the rails. Should have brought a re-railer down with me. And you can see here that the boxcar does glide nice and evenly over the rails. Well, except for the fact that when it hits these wires over here. Uh, 
Okay, and in order to make sure that your train runs smoothly, it's important to only solder the outside of the rails when uh, when you're joining them together because on the inside of the rails, that's where the flange of the train is going to ride, or of, of the wheel. So you want, you want to make sure that that flange is um, has a nice clean mating surface on the inside of the flex of the flex track you can see there there is a little bit of a bump from where I cut it but all in all it's pretty smooth uh, this side it's got a little bit of solder but it's still pretty smooth also um, like I said might want to try filing that down and also just getting a little bit better at soldering uh, then what I wanted to do is try to get away from using the powered rail joiners they're a little expensive so what I went and did is uh, had rented my uh, model railroad book that you can actually just solder wires directly to the outside of the rails same thing putting them on the outside so that way they don't mess around with the flange um, of the wheels on your car and to test again we can see that the car does roll smoothly across the solder joint, uh, except for the fact that the wires hit it. Okay, now I'm going to test the conductivity to make sure that everything's working appropriately. I'm gonna get up my multimeter and make sure that there's zero resistance between the wire end and uh, both ends of that solder joint, and then also both ends of uh, these solder joints here for the, uh, for the two pieces of the flex track. Okay, so we see here I have my multimeter hooked up. It's set for a very small amount of ohms, 200 ohms max scale. Touch these together, and we see that the total ohms goes to zero, which is what we want. That means we have perfect conductivity. I don't quite have enough hands for this, but in order to try to show absolutely everything. But if we say, you know, grab onto the first wire here with the first probe, I'm going to grab onto uh, the rail down here. Whoop. We can see that the multimeter goes down to zero, which means that we have conductivity between the rails, which means that our solder joints are holding and that there's conductivity. Um, you can also use a light bulb and a battery and just make sure that as you run the wires down to check multiple spots that uh, you're getting connectivity because the light bulb will light up or you can also go ahead and actually hook it up to a um, you know a power pack and try to run a train down through the rails so uh, now that I know this this uh, the section of track is working what I would do is then get ready to attach it back to my layout uh, if I was using a curved section I would have already attached further upstream on the on the flex track and then you know I'd finish modeling in the rest of my curve like so it's very hard to see and then you know hammer in the next section if I'm modeling a straight section uh, I, you know have the option of not securing anything down until after everything's soldered and hooked up now this is when you want to use these leftover ties uh, not exactly sure which ones came from which but you, know, you get the general idea that you can snap everything back into place and you know create the effect of the full railroad on the ties. Uh, you can either glue these back on. If you're able to snap them off without breaking them, um, you can you know, try snapping them back on. I basically had to break these to get these off because I didn't really know what I was doing. But if you line everything up, glue these down, atta or attach them to the rails, you, know, you won't even notice that you end up having a joint there. Uh, just make sure to leave a little bit of room for the rail joiner because you're not gonna be able to attach the ties with the rail joiner there. Um, like I said, the so at the end of the day, the only thing that you're really going to have is the, you know, I guess, visual of any of the solder on the rails and then these hidden wires, which would disappear underneath your your top uh, scenery, whether it be grass paper or, or whatever other, um, I guess, base you're using for the railroad. Uh, so you just, you know, curl these up under the under the uh, under this the entire display and you really wouldn't see anything there. The front one. Uh, depending on where you ended your scenery, you might see a little bit of the solder joint. It's not uh, it, it's not that bad. It's certainly a lot more sightly than the red wires using that I was using on my Bachman connectors. Those are pretty obvious, even when I place them on the back away from the viewer. So you know you're viewing it here. You can still see a little bit of the giant red uh, uh, red and black connector on the back there. So you know I definitely like the solder approach a little better. Um, 
I'm a little ashamed to admit this took me a decently long time just to make this this one section here. We're probably about 30 minutes to an hour uh, just between gathering all of my tools and also uh, it's because I'm pretty bad at soldering. But uh, that does bring me to another point is just make sure you have good tools. You know, now that I have a better soldering iron, uh, this was a lot easier than, you. like I said, using my old soldering iron. When I need to get myself a good pair of wire strippers. Uh, depending on at least the gauge of wire I'm using for this plastic coated wire, my wire strippers don't really work. So I have to almost you know, cut them off by hand. Um, I also recommend, you know, of course my jeweler's file. Like I said, I have a whole bunch of those that I haven't even uh, used some of the other uh, types of bits yet. Um, pair of snips, I need to get a better pair of snips. Uh, hacksaw, I need to get a better hacksaw. Uh, multimeter to make sure that everything is working correctly. And then, you know, just a bunch of patience and you know the willingness to you know just keep trying because like I said this took me a decent amount of time and if I'm gonna put down um, you know the the layout that I want to do I'm definitely going to need to do quite a few joints probably on the order of a hundred or so and uh, you know Rome wasn't built in a day and you know you don't have to lay your golden spike on the first day you know you can certainly lay the track that you can and then you know, run the trains, even if you can't run them in a full loop, so at least you get to keep running something. I am a little nervous, though, to do the solder method on some of the turnouts. Some of the turnouts are very expensive, and uh, although I know you can still, say, cut some of the turnouts and modify them slightly, I'd be very, very nervous to ruin a good turnout with a, with a soldering method. Um, I know it's the way to go, but I definitely want to practice more first. That'd probably be the last piece of track that I would... Um, that I would actually want to solder. Uh, it's one of the first pieces of track that you need to lay out in order to ensure that the layout is going to work because the turnouts kind of dictate where the rest of the track is going to have to go in order to uh, you know meet the turnout and the switch tracks correctly. But in this instance, it might be some of the last pieces that actually solder. I might just uh, use regular rail joiners. Uh, so anyway, just thank you very much for, uh, for watching my videos and uh, thank you also for all of your helpful uh, tips and tricks and things like that. Um, I do read everybody's comments, so thank you. Uh, you know, I apologize. It's been a little while since the last video, but you know, hopefully this will bring about uh, some new momentum and I'll be able to start on my next layout. And the first step will probably be to construct a new table, a new uh, modular table, so that way I can still remove sections as needed. So I might have a video on that in the near future and uh, hopefully everybody will take a watch on that one as well. All right, thank you, bye.